feathers. These are simple feathers. Um, nothing heirloomy, like I said earlier. Uh, we're not doing fancy Amish feathers or bump back feathers, the traditional ones or whatever. We're just going to do some simple long arm feathers. They are basically a paisley shape and they are worked from bottom to top. All right. When we work heirloom feathers or bump back feathers, they're worked over the top first and then you backtrack and you come up over the top, over the top, bump back over the top. These guys are under and up, under and up. All right. I want you to think of a paisley shape um, or I don't know, some people see a tadpole. I basically just see a paisley shape. Don't overthink them. All right. What you do want is a nice S curve. We've got that S curve again, right here. We've got that S curve up and over, and then this is just an arc. So S curve, S curve, round it out, arc. S curve, arc, S curve, arc. Where this usually goes wrong is people fail to go to fail to go in here, and then they get kind of um, hot doggy looking. I have a drawing back here. I'll show you in a minute. All right. So S curve in, you're going to swing in just like you're doing a leaf, but you're going to round it out nicely, do an arc and come all the way back. Again, get used to doing this shape in every direction. No turning your paper, no turning your sketchbooks, because as you're dancing around the quilt, we're going to put it on a curl. You're going to need your brain to know how to swing that up and out to get yourself around, whether it's going on a curl or a spine or whatever it is you're doing. Okay. All right. So you're going to practice those again, the inside first, no matter what direction it is. So in and out, in and out, doesn't matter. You're always going to do the, the S curve first and then the arc. Now we're going to swing it on a curl. All right, so we're going to add this, these feathers onto this little curl. I'm going to swing my way in. Now this is similar to, uh, similar to the flower in that these feathers are going to walk their way. We're going to come out, but we're going to come all the way out and we're going to walk our way around the curl with the feathers. So we're going to have space. And I know I haven't got to that. Uh, I haven't got to that thing yet. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go right back to here first. Here we go. I'll come back. We'll come back to this one in a second. Here we go. This is the pearl on a spine. And again, these are not the heirloom ones. These are just the simple feathers. All right. I'm going to slide from the bottom. I'm going to slide up the spine, travel off it, swing my feather up and over. And then by the time I hit the spine, I'm already parallel with it. So I'm merging onto it. Okay. You don't have a lot of space here. It's very important that you don't allow this to get on that angle. Like I showed you with the leaf, because it goes south really fast with feathers. We've got a ton of space along this spine. It doesn't matter if the spine's straight, curved, a curl, I don't know, an inverted flying goose, doesn't matter what, what shape it is. The feather has to have space so it can travel up wherever it is that you're going. Um, I don't know, even if you wanted to put them traveling up the inside of a ditch and popping them into a square, they still have to take up space in that area so that they can travel. Make sense? All right. So if we look here, this is pretty simple, nothing fancy. I started here. This one swings out and up and over here. And by the time I touch the spine, I'm like right there. I have this much space. Okay. The merge is really important. Like I said, you know what? I'll just show it to you now. This is what happens when they go wrong.
I started out off okay, or I started out okay. And then right about here, I didn't merge properly. It was very slight, but if you, if you can actually see that, hopefully you can, I didn't tuck and roll. Like I said, it's not tucked in there. What happens is when you do that, it makes the next one worse. So at that point, now I'm coming in like that. So I'm obviously doing the same thing on this side because I've now I'm, I'm swinging and I'm not thinking. Because I went in on an angle there and I didn't tuck it, it doesn't allow me to come off the spine by sliding. Now I have to get off it because this is in my way. Does that make sense? And every feather you do thereafter, just it just gets worse. And then they don't look like feathers anymore. Now they just look like hot dogs or something. And they just don't, <laughs> they just don't look pretty. So you really have to, <laughs> you really have to merge the feathers to make sure that they stay in nice shape. Paisley, 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 all right? They're not coming to a point, but they do have to come and tuck, okay? I'll be a grown-up again. I'm going to draw something. All right. So when I do my curl, I come in. And I actually want, it doesn't matter if you only want your feathers just on the edge of your curl, then you're only going to backtrack or echo to wherever you want to be. When I do this, I tend to go almost all the way back because I like it to almost look like a little feather motif rather than sort of a flower. So I'm going to echo my way back, come up and over, all the way to somewhere here. This can be open. It could be completely backtracked. It could be a ribbon curl. Whatever curl you're doing, it, that's going to alternate. So as soon as I get to here, then I'm going to swing my feathers in, all right? So swing in, S-curve, arc, merge. This is automatically an S-curve because I'm following the curve of the feather before it. And that is how that other mess starts to happen because you have to follow the curve of the one before it to do the next one. So as soon as you start not merging here and you start coming in on an angle, it's gonna throw everyone off after that, right? All right, so we're gonna swing them out, merge in, swing it out, merge in. Just keep thinking Paisley, S-curve, arc, S-curve, arc. I like to start to let them come out a little bit further. It's sort of, um, I don't know. It sort of looks like, um, what's the bird? The Beretta bird. You know, when they puff up their feathers and they're in the front, cockatoo? pardon? Cockatoo? No, you know that white Beretta bird? Cockatoo? Is it a cock cockatoo? Cockatoo? Okay. Mm, somebody tell me, somebody out there knows. You know what I mean? When they fluff out their feathers and they get that, like that, that big um, plume, that's what this kind of reminds me of. So you can just keep swinging out as far as you want. So you can come just to here or you can just keep swinging. It depends on the look that you're going for. So stop whenever you like. But what you don't want to do is start doing this. See what happens? As soon as I stop tucking that in, they don't look like feathers anymore. They lose that S-curve, that nice, tight, coming into almost a point. We are going to come out, spin our feathers all the way around, and then I'm going to bounce back with my echo. You don't have to echo every single feather. Just echo back as far as you want to go because you're already thinking, where am I going next? As soon as I plop that in there, this echo is going to decide, or I'm going to decide where I want to go by how far back I echo. So if I wanted to come up here and head that way, 
I will come all the way back to here. If I wanted the next one to sort of swing out from here, I don't know, swing down and come this way maybe, I'm only going to come to here, maybe I only go to there. Every feather is going to be different. Every, every curly feather is going to have a different number of feathers. Don't count them like the flowers. I know last week I said three and five for petals. One, three, five, seven looks really good. Um, but with these things, honestly, there's so many on here. Don't get hung up on how many there are. Don't worry. It's not all clustered in one little curl that's meant to look sort of like a circle when it's finished. Let it be what it is. If you've got five, ten, four, six, it, it, it'll all be okay. All right? So on this one, I came in came on the outside all the way to here. I've left a space just because I like that look. It looks, um, it just gives it a little more, um, like, what's the word? Personality. Personality. Well, it just makes it a little more, like a little more hefty. You know what I mean? Not as delicate. Um, but if I was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't overthink it. I just do it. So some may have it and some may not, and I don't care. There'll be some in there that have a space all across the quilt and some won't. It all looks good together and it just makes it more interesting, right? So I swing my feathers all the way down. I like to come all the way to here usually, or, you know, I'll tuck them right in, right into the front if I've got room and I feel like it needs, the space needs to be filled, spatial awareness. If I felt that this space was too big, I would keep going. So I could get a couple more in there, so it's a little more dense in there. If I want something loose and more open, I'm not going to go in so far. Okay? So I echo back, and then I'm swinging myself way down in here, come back on the outside, and then I'm swinging those feathers all the way in. S-curve, arc, S-curve, arc, as far as I want to go. I know I need room to echo to echo this so you know I didn't want to maybe come in too far here because then my echo may get too close to that line so I stop there bounce my way back and then swing in the next one and just keep traveling okay so we'll try it does somebody have a question no. okay is everything okay yeah. okay swing it out swing it out Swing it out. Somebody asked me last week if the, if the tips of my petals touched my curl, and I couldn't find one. I think I found one that did. When I'm stitching these, I don't think I actually touch very often um, this thing here. If you want to slide right on that spine and touch it, that's fine. If you're nice and close, the eye will automatically close it. So don't worry about not touching it. If there's a little space, you won't see it later, okay? Swing, swing, swing it out, swing it out, swing it out, swing it out. Let's do one little one. Ah, we'll put one more little one right there. Got a little smaller as I came in. And I'm going to echo my way out. If I want to go down here, I'm going to stop maybe here and I'll swing in my next one. But if I want to go up there, then I'm going to keep echoing till I get to wherever I want to go. So let's echo up to here, maybe to there, and then I'll just swing back down and put one right here. Swing them round. Swing them round, swing them round. Like that. Tuck a little one there. If you look, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I left a space here. I don't care. It's fine. The rest of them are tucked. I prefer them if they're tucked. But if I've got one or two where there happens to be a little space, as long as this is following the line of the one before it and it doesn't look like broken off or anything, just leave it. Just leave it. 
They don't have to be perfect. Let them, just let them be. Pop my way back out as far as I want to go. Maybe I'm going to go down here now. I'll put a little one here. Again, not every single one of these needs to have feathers on it. Throw in just some regular curls. If you don't want it as dense, this gets really dense. Whether you stitch it out this big as a filler or whether you stitch it out this big as a full-on edge-to-edge design, um, it, it is quite dense. So it is a bit of a commitment when you're doing it. Um, but like I said, you could do mostly curls across the quilt and then add these in sporadically every now and then. They don't have to be on every single curl. It's cute, right? It's really cute. It looks really nice stitched out too. Your stitching, as I've said before, your stitching is always going to look better than your drawing and your doodling. Does everybody like this design? It's really cute, hey? Gosh, I love quilting. I just love quilting. Just standing at the machine. I don't even have to be quilting a quilt. I just love the sound and the feel of the machine. And you just put on a nice, great big solid piece of fabric and some really pretty thread and just disappear into the abyss of creativeness <laughs> or whatever. That sounded really stupid, but you guys know what I mean, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's a cute little uh, feather filler. Um, so I would just start in like this and then I come back. I will usually leave a space. It doesn't have to be a big space or a little space. That's going to depend on how big or small it is. Okay. And then I'll just walk my way up here. Swing around, swing around, swing around. I get to about there and then I'm going to echo my way back. I cross over, never been arrested. I'll cross the line, I'll cross over here, right? And then I'll work this one. Sometimes I get right close to that spine. Sometimes I let these little feathers stick out a little bit. When I get to here, I'll echo my way as far as I wanna go till I wanna change direction. I'll put one here, so I spin out, back, work my feather, oops, I'm not leaving that there, sorry, hang on, tea game time, this board, you probably can't see it, but this board is like waving like a tree in the wind. There we go, get to there, echo. I'll get to here and I'll let myself cross over. Echo my way back. And then I may just sort of echo my way out. And what you wanna do is make sure that you're changing um, changing direction. So this one may actually just come down. All right. When I echo back, I've got a space there. This is a filler design. All right. If I'm doing this in a space as a background filler, I want it to be dense. I want it to be tight. I'm probably using um, 60, 80, or 100 weight thread when I'm doing a filler. So I'm getting texture. I'm not seeing a bunch of thread. All right. So it's okay for the design to be dense because the thread is a lightweight and we're just going to see the, we're not going to see the thread. We're just going to see the texture. Okay. So I'm going to bounce my way back. While I'm in here, I may want to just put a little something in there just to fill in the space a little bit. So 
I may just do this before I cross over. It just kind of fills it in so you don't all of a sudden have a bare spot that would stick out a little bit, right? Not a lot in there. Cross back over and send myself this way. Now, I may want to start to go up there somewhere. So there's nothing wrong with doing this. I've got that little flick, sort of like a leaf, and then I'll work my way up here. So this sort of answers both questions, right? Because I've got a space in my spine, I'm echoing my way back down and then just filling that in. I'm not going to bother going in there. It's already tight enough and by the time it's all done, nobody's going to know that that wasn't echoed and it'll be just fine. I don't want to get myself all the way in there because spatial awareness, I've got room to get in there, but to get out, it's going to be really crowded. I could do it. You could backtrack it or whatever, but you know what? That space is so small, we don't need to go in there. So I'll stop and I'll just back myself out. And so on and so forth. I like that. That looks beautiful stitched out, I promise you. It's, uh, it's not so pretty in black dry erase marker, but it's beautiful on a quilt. It's very um, delicate, even though it's, even though it's dense on sort of a heavy design, it's a delicate design. Those little feathers and they just look really pretty on a quilt. Yeah. All right. Doodle every day. Don't turn your sketchbooks. Relax. Have fun. Change up the colors of your, your pens if you need to, so you can look at pretty colors. And take the time, take the time to throw some fabric on your machines, downtime, especially for those of you who quilt for a business. Just take the time to feed your creative soul, throw some fabric on, put on some really good music, your favorite color thread, and just get lost in the process. All right, and hit me up in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe, check the bell icon. All, all that YouTube stuff, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. That's fun, hey? It was good. Thank you. Bye, guys.